Hello everyone, this is Matthew once again, and today I'm back to do another review for the month of October, and before I do that, if you remember my review for A Quiet Place, I made an error to say that the writers who wrote A Quiet Place wrote this movie. I was wrong. It was actually written by Josh Campbell, Matt Stook, and Damien Chazelle, so it doesn't have any of the writers from A Quiet Place who wrote this film, so I was wrong about that. I guess I misread it from what I just read out and make a thinking that they wrote this film, but they didn't. So, yeah, the writers are Damon Chazelle, who are going to direct La La Land, Whiplash, and First Man. And you have other writers, such so as Matt Stokin, which I tried, and Josh Campbell. So, so I apologize for that one mistake if you see my review for A Quiet Place. So, Quiet Place was going to be a Cloverfield movie, but it's not a Cloverfield movie. It just ended up being a standalone film. So, alright. So now I got that out of my way, but just so you know that I know I am not reviewing this movie today. I would love to, and yes, it is a good movie, but that will be another time. Here's the real movie I'm reviewing. The Predator movies. Which, of course, these are my brother's copy of the films. Johnson. And to start off with is... The all-time classic action film of the 80s with Arnold Schwarzenegger, which is a childhood of mine. The first Predator movie, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, Bill Duke, Apelia Carrillo, Sonny Lennon, Jesse Ventura, Richard Chase, R.G. Armstrong, Shane Black, and the Predator himself is Kevin Peter Hall, creature designed by Stan Winston, music by Alan Tefestri, written by Jim and John Thomas, produced by John Davis, Joel Silver, Lawrence Gordon, and directed by the guy who going to direct Die Hard 1 and 3, a live action hero in Humphrey October, John McTurnan. And of course, yes, I am holding the Ultimate Hunter Edition, which is supposed to be a pretty bad Blu-ray. And I'll just make this a little rant right here. On the first Blu-ray, the quality isn't that bad, but it has no features other than the trailer. But this Blu-ray right here, it has the features, but the quality sucks. Come on, Fox, you could do better than that. You don't have to DNR by removing all the grain, so... So that's my rant about it. Which, of course, yes, this movie is in 4K, but you've got to have a 4K Blu-ray player in order to see in 4K. But I would have loved it better if you remastered this regular Blu-ray right here in 4K, because not many people can own a 4K Blu-ray player. So, but it is what it is. But anyway, enough about the Blu-ray. Here's the backstory about the making of the film. Oh, yes, um, that's right. My history with this movie was on FX, and I believe... Our brother Steven show us this movie, along with my brother Johnson, myself, and Steven show it to us, and we saw this movie on DVD once you got a copy of the film at Walmart, and loved it. So, now here's a backstory of this film, and this is mainly about the design of the Predator. And before I tell you what the design of the Predator was originally going to be, here's what the concept of the film was. It was based on someone else's idea who joked about Rocky Balboa fighting an extraterrestrial if a fist film was being made. Which, of course, there's never been a Rocky film where you fought off an extraterrestrial. So that's where the idea came from. But, of course, uh, the idea of this movie could be uh, like a cross between Alien and Rambo. Because of, due to the sense of the movie Aliens. Because you have a group of soldiers fighting off against an alien. I know, this one is like the exact same thing, except it's on Earth. And it doesn't take place in the future. And, of course, the design of the Predator. Here's the pictures on the making of the film, before Stan Winston was brought on board, and before Ken Peter Hall was cast as the Predator. Here it goes. Before Ken Peter Hall got cast as the Predator, Jean-Claude Van Damme was originally going to be the Predator, but was let go due to wearing the suit by making him pass out. Which, of course, Joe Silver noticed that when he was having a hard time being in the suit, and Van Damme tells Joe Silver that he's not passing out, so, they try to do another take, Van Damme passes out, and Joe Silver just immediately fire him. So, goodbye Van Damme, hello, Kevin Peter Hall. And before Stan Winston was brought on board, the design of the, of the Predator was done by Steve Johnson, who worked on Slimer on, for Ghostbusters. Van Damme himself hated the suit he wore, as he thought it may look more like a superhero, which of course the suit that he was wearing was the red suit for the cloaking device, as he did not notice that. 
And the focal stage of the Predator were provided by Pierre Cohen, who is well known famously as the voice of Optimus Prime from the Transformers franchise. Which that is really awesome. The movie was released on June 12, 1987, and it opened mixed reviews by critics, but as time goes by, it's considered one of the greatest action films of all time. And it made back its $15 million budget by making $59.7 million. $59.7 million. And it earned an Oscar nomination for a special effects, but it lost to the Joe Dante film Inner Space. So, what can I say about Prairie? It hasn't already been said, because it's a classic Schwarzenegger movie. The characters may not be fully three dimensional, but at the same time, you love them. And they have a great presence to him. You love Arnold Schwarzenegger. You love Bill Duke. You love Carl Weathers. You love the guys. And yes, you even love the Predator himself. And the design by Stan Winston is such an iconic figure. Definitely what the Predator should be. Not the Steve Johnson one. Because the design I just show you the pictures of looks like it belongs at Power Rangers. Which it rightfully deserves to be there. And I thought the music by Alan Silvestri is also iconic too. I love this music for the scene from the film, as much as I love his music for Ray Player One, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Cast Away, The Back to the Future movies, and so on. And John Returns' direction is fantastic, and the writing between the Thomas brothers, Jim and John Thomas, wrote a very good script, and I love the premise of this film. It looks very gritty, it has the right kind of atmosphere, I love the settings of the jungle, and the movie is 106 minutes long, and it never stops. You never get bored of tears with this movie. It's just... Less talking, more straight to the point. And the movie itself is very suspenseful and very exciting. And has some very good one-liners like, Stick around. Knock, knock. If it bleeds, we can kill it. When it is out there, you kill Hopper. Now what's us? He was getting alive! Did you cook up the story I dropped six months in the main grinder? What happened to you, Dylan? You should be someone who I can trust. I woke up. Why don't you? You're an asset. An expendable asset. And I use you to get the job done. Got it? My men are not expendable. And I don't do this kind of work. It's time to let all parents out of the bag. Payback time. You're one ugly mother. Beep beep. Which I cannot say. Over here. Anytime. There's someone out there waiting for us, and ain't no man. We're all gonna die. And yes, of course, the famous line by Schwarzenegger. Run! Go! Get to the chopper! If I have any issues with the film, but they're not really much of nitpicks, it's that you do notice some audio issues, like one, for example, where during the action scene in the movie, where they... It starts attacking the camp right there, Schwarzenegger and the other guys. Where one of them, Carl Weather goes, Target is in Or whatever he says. His mouth isn't moving, and these are Schwarzenegger's whistling. Which, of course, I can't whistle either, so I just make up a whistle sound effect. You can notice some little audio issues right there in the movie. But those are just goo, so there's nothing much to complain about. But, yeah. There's nothing much I can say about Predator, because it's a classic movie. If you have not seen Predator, then... Watch it. This is definitely a fun Schwarzenegger movie. Definitely one of my favorite, favorite movies. I think it is one of my favorite movies, and definitely one of my favorite Schwarzenegger movies. I don't know which one's my favorite John McTurnan movie, this or Die Hard. They're both equal on their own. And yes, Die Hard's turning 30 next year, and it's going to be in theaters by Phantom Events on November 11th and 14th. It's been like 30 years, and this movie is now 31 years old. Yeah, I love Predator, and definitely earns an A+. I love Predator, and really had a fun time. So, that's my review for Predator, and let me know what you think of this video. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Feel free to put your comments down below, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, take care, and stay tuned for my review of... It landed in the most forbidden jungle. It came from the thrill of the hunt. And now, it's coming to a different kind of jungle. And I'm about to watch that right now. See ya.